All government's argument is highly contingent upon these soldiers have a selfish bitch intention to only kill people. This is a very extreme characterization of soldiers. I mean, if the comments of your commander is strongly persuasive, and if the soldiers really afraid out of being fired, then they will not intentionally do that because they would be fired anyway. The most confusing part of Gavin's speech is when they will justify, it's okay, okay for you to get fired. Let's just you get fired, not killing other people. It's not that easy for you to say that, right? The lives of them is so contingent upon this works in military, they don't have any alternative, and how could you easily say that, let's just get fired and go out from that military operations. I need to discharge several things from Gov before proceeding to the reasons why Op needs to leave. On the evaluations, right, and checks and balances mm -hmm. and etc. This is literally an argument that is not exclusive. Because under our side, Hano clearly tells you that if you punish the leader, the future leader will change because afraid of being prosecuted, yeah, yeah. more likely they will be more cautious, they would still protect its um, soldiers as well because he's afraid of being prosecuted as well. That's not an exclusive argument. If the tipping point of you adjudicators giving them winning only because they said at least there is a collective check and balances and accountability, that's not a positive contribution. There is a rhetoric left unproven. First yeah. reason why government needs to lose. On the principal level, they told us two things. Okay, you do consent to this and you create harm. Surely they prosecute on the ground. The debate is not whether they are the one that prosecute or not, but who gives them that comment for them to do so. The only defense we heard from proposition is that, okay, but they are complicit to it. Sure, but Gov burden is to tell you why complicit is a legitimate parameter to punish them. Because Hanun tells you that even when you kill other burglar that wants to kill you, you can be forgiven in court because it's a matter of self-defense. You are also complicit to that situation, but you cannot be punished under our side. It indicates that complicit is not the parameter of the principle that Gov needs to win yes, in this yeah. debate. We even already engaged the scenario that even if you can criticize, I told you clearly in my speech that inside a complex war, you cannot criticize because it's very short for you. You just cannot debate during war, right? But number two, an ideal criticism is when it's only when you apply their policy. But the context of the debate happens before you get their proposal. It's their burden to justify that why it's okay. What government never engage is what if this person really innocent and why it's still fine to punish them on their side. Second reason why they need to lose on the who better solves war, right? I think they completely dismiss this point. Even if you wanted to give them winning on the principle or you wanted that locket, I think the most important thing is the solvency of war under opposition. Because we told you from the very beginning that number one, soldiers now will have the willingness to report all of the evidences that they experiences during war, considering the fact that if they told all of those things, their, criminal, uh, the, their liability will be more, will be burdened, they will be prosecuted under your sides. So less evidence, which is very important in order for you to future authorize another war, which based on these experiences and evidences. But the second thing is this, about the longer time of war. We even already contextualize this, that under their sides, the war is going to be longer time because <coughs> now the commanders and the soldiers have a trust issue. They're going to question one another and becoming more skeptical. Now the war is being hindered by your policy. Their burden, we, we already even engaged the scenario that we will concede that a short time of war or a short decision making maybe would sometimes be reckless and maybe it's not necessarily perfect, right? But what we argue to you in opposition that at least we can save people who currently in a very sensitive time of war, they at least can be safe. What they never justify is why even if war is going to take a longer time and it's going to take a much casualties, it is perfectly fine to apply this policy. UGM claims the victory of this year also. Well.